this time. We are staking with it this time. Uh, C9 fought the war to get this game started, and it has begun. I don't think that's actually true. Oh God, please no. I am saying that. I am also at Skype, but they also said the start. Okay. Alrighty here. So take a look here at the defense as it rolls out here for C9. What has been a very unconventional set here so far. It's going to be Adam here on the Mercy. What else will we be on? Kai Kai on the Roadhog. Grego on Lucia. Reaver on 76. Debit on the Reinhardt. And sure for Prop. We'll see what he's going to be on. Probably a Reaper though, if I had to guess. Oh, dude. I mean... All right, I'm just gonna talk like we're gonna go because they keep saying lobby nothing. I, we have to go. Well, C9 has a lot of so they're probably not going to go back to lobby given the other states on this. So I don't even know anymore. I, I would imagine it's been not. one of those days. Oh no! Uh, oh, they are going back to lobby. Oh. I don't even know anymore, Hex. I don't know, man. I, now I'm wishing I had a superpower that I could do something about this. Oh wow, we are getting a caster in here though. They are getting invited. Hopefully we're going right back into it. Oh, so there, there's still a little bit of uh, talk going on in chat. <laughs> Kai Kai says, okay, ready question mark. Hopefully we are ready to go here again. Sorry for what has honestly been a little bit weird. Traveling to the Third time's a charm. Third time is a charm. One, one can hope anyway. All right, let's do but this. People like saying that. Thank you so much, Twitch Chat, for sticking with us. We do very much appreciate it. Um, I don't know. I want to say it could have been worse, but I cannot for the life of me right now imagine how. We are in game. We have all the casters, all the admins here. Do you, do you want to run us back through with this Cloud9 uh Defense. The C9 defense. All right, yeah. looking at them here uh, again. <laughs> people gang all into it in chat right now. Oh my goodness! It is going to be Reaver here uh, on the 76. Debit on the Reinhardt. Grego on Lucio. Kai Kai on Roadhog. Adam on the Mercy and Sure Four. Very likely to be on the Reaper, but we will see in just a moment. No, he's going on the Tracer again. So defensive Tracer in play. I like the seeing this. We haven't seen too much in the way of defensive Tracer as of late, but it is trying to make its way back in slowly but surely. We've seen a couple teams try it a little bit on Dorado, but usually they get off it pretty quickly because the, the offense is generally just running too many tanks to deal with it. So you generally switch on to Reaper here. We might see a similar thing come out from Shore for at a certain point in time. Although Tracer's uh, definitely coming back a little bit, especially on Hollywood uh, here and there, and uh, especially from Team Nubris because IDDQD likes to run it a little bit. All right, so from the offense, though, it looks like they might be running a Tracer of their own. But that is Michael. Um, Nineco, Ninco, Nineco is going to be on Zarya. Peacock will be on Reinhardt Soup on the Roadhog. Applers on Mercy. Motorious on the Pharah. So a couple tanks here. They're going to run a combo as well, but I imagine that that combo can't be very aggressive as they only have the single support. All right, so take a look at Sure4. Sure4 sure going to be running the flanking defensive tracer, getting right in versus Michael. Almost wins that fight out, right? Michael has to back off in a hurry. Sure4 going to back off as well, not liking what he saw. Let's talk here, since we're on Dorado, let's talk here about the defensive Roadhog play. It has been a staple on Dorado defense here for quite a while. We've seen lots of teams run it well, whether it be Harm Blue for Gale Force, Enigma for LG. It has definitely been a good look. Yeah, really. As sure for now gets into the back and takes out Applers immediately. So they're going to be down their mercy, and this is looking bad here for the offense. Yeah, it kind of uh, puts the end of that fight right away. They're going to actually just aggress the point here. Now Kai Kai comes out, he gets the second hook in. Uh, the Roadhog hook second, he usually wins that. And go share for and then we'll eat a fair rocket, but still two kills for the defense. Defense hanging in there. It is still a longer run back here. They are not running a teleport or anything like that. So if they don't get res by Adam, C9, anytime they lose someone, it takes a while to get back to the fight. Yeah, luckily, I mean, the, the die, the death was uh, short for for the most part. He's on his tracer, so he'd be able to get back pretty quickly here. They are giving up some ground under this arch, though. It's not ideal. <laughs> Defense is starting to get pushed back a little bit. The offense of Kung moving a little bit deeper in. Motorio almost going down here. The Sure4 has to back out, and Sure4 will get the pickoff. 
You don't really think about uh, Trace having huge long range abilities, but here comes the Pulse Bomb. Pulse Bomb goes in, does not quite connect, but will do a little bit of damage to the Roadhog, sure for being a pest in the back. Meanwhile, you look at what's going on for the front. Here comes Reaver. Attack Visor on the way, has the double kill. Grego mopping up, Reaver making it a triple. And man, once the shield tank is dealt with, the attack visor does so much damage, X. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of the reasons that you're seeing Roadhog along with Soldier 76 in the meta, and if Roadhog can absolutely dominate a Reinhardt shield, he'll just sit there and distance click for a little bit, and shield only takes a certain amount of shots, and once that's down and you bring in your uh, your Soldier 76 to clean it up, it's kind of similar to what we used to see when Kree in the meta, that everyone would focus fire that shield once it got down, you high noon and get giant combos off of it. At least you're sure, sure for right now, was in the back, does have to back out a little bit, and takes out Michael with some beautiful tracking. Michael not even able to go for the rewind there, so good stuff coming up from C9, and they're holding Kung way, way back right now. I mean, you take a look at this, they only have to hold for about another minute 30. Yeah, first point Dorado, one of the harder points to push, although we've seen lately it's uh, definitely been more offensive favored than it has in the past. Uh, they are pushing all the way together now. They've yet to deal with Shortcore in the back line. Here comes the Pulse Bomb. Pulse Bomb does come out, takes out PCAC in the back. Might have a uh, Graviton Surge coming out from Nunko in just a moment here, but he has to back out. He's at 30 HP. C9 just going right in, being hyper aggressive, taking out three. Motorius does a panic barrage, and there was just no reason to yeah. use that there. The fight was already over. Even if you killed someone, what are you doing? That's not where you want to use it there, especially with Graviton about to be up. Now they don't really have the greatest follow-up for it, and Motorius, I mean, he was going to switch, I guess. He's going to run onto the Tracer. It's a desperation time. There is some follow-up in Soup, who's actually probably been the highlight of this Kuhn roster so far. Well, Kung right now moving forward. They do have Graviton up. They're going to get three members of C9 in. Will they have the fall off? The Sound Bear are going to do a lot in defending this. Reaver coming in with the attack visor, looking for Michael. Michael has to blow rewind. Two kills here for the side of C9. Make it three. Michael's going to go down as Reaver again, the attack visor, just rolling up and getting whatever he wants done. Pulse Bomb coming in. That's going to blow up Roadhog before he takes out Sure for that. Yeah, the res does come in, but they still have to retreat after the resurrection. Never the feeling you want. You want to res and then continue fighting again. They are chasing out to this arch. They do get charged, Debit does. Charges out, saves his own life. Kai Kai in the back line doing all of that whole hog. Should be it. Really good defense coming out here from C9. And now here's the thing for C9. We talk about first holds. In the past, when you run a partial stopwatch or something, you would have to just go all the way to the first point, right? Yeah. Well, for C9, they don't even have to do that. <laughs> the new comp system is great for partial completion. C9 only has to get the truck this far. So for C9, this could be a very, very quick Dorado round. Switching sides. Absolutely. They, they could run pretty much whatever they want. I don't really have any doubts that they'll be able to push through it here. Um, so we'll see what they choose to run. If they just go for their standard composition, they go something a little goofy here. But I mean, you always look for kind of the standout players in, in new rosters that you're not super familiar with. I think Soup had a decent game. He was landing his hooks. He got a couple kills. He did show up in the kill feed more than the rest of the squad. So he also mentioned in chat that he doesn't know these guys. <laughs> so distancing himself already. Alrighty, so take a look here at the defense coming out from the Kung side. We'll see if they have a different uh, setup here. They will be in the red on defense. Uh, colors do not swap between attack and defense anymore. You keep the same color the entire match, but it will be Applers here on the Mercy, Nunko on the Lucio, Motorius on the Pharah, Peacock on Reinhardt, Soup on the Reaper. We'll see what Michael ends up doing. He was on the defensive or offensive tracer before, and he's going to be repping a defensive tracer. So, pretty similar setup coming out here, but they're not going to be running the 76. Instead, they're running the Pharah, which might be a mistake going up against uh, what appears to be the age old classic here from C9 double tracer, double Winston, Lucio, and a Mercy. We almost king of the hill right now, Hex. Yeah, almost. Um, I mean, it's not really surprising to see Cloud9 run double Winstons on a payload map. That is kind of their preferred mode of tanking. Although, generally, I think you would even see Debit be running a Reinhardt here just based on the geography of the map. But they might actually be switching off some of this. Short Ford does switch onto a Pharah for the moment. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what they're going to come out with yet. I think they could run this and just run the combo of Adam and Short Ford wherever they want. And then the ground force of Debit, uh, Kai Kai, and Grego doing some cart push. So sure for right now, landing rocket after rocket, uh, just looking to crack around our shield, the defense holding up there. Usually you'll see a defensive Dorado, they might stop, start there, but they'll move to the courtyard. And that's exactly what Kung is doing right now. They don't want to stay up on the top. Yeah, they have to rotate. 
Oh, nope, by the way, here that they're not going double trace and the damage sure for did trade or er, switch off to the Pharah. But he takes out Michael all the same. Tracer getting caught in unawares. One quick pick here for C9. Make it two picks. Sureford just going off. Landing a huge mid-air rocket towards the end as well. And C9 is making this look incredibly easy yeah. right now, Hex. As both Reaver and Sureford just getting everything they want. Picking apart this Kung defense. And Hex, this could be over before it even begins as they just got to the point. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, everything we expect out of Cloud9 there, I mean, as soon as they decide to initiate, Debit and Kai Kai both time their jumps perfectly. They're dropping bubbles in synchronization with each other, then they're just cleaning up with Reaver, and then you've got Shorefar on uh, Pharah. Shorefar, like, has been really playing on his Pharah lately because they have switched his role, him and Reaver, so he's actually gotten a lot of work in on it. Hang off there. Good play coming up from Shorefar, as always. We'll see where Kung decides to bring us next, but... I mean, standard stuff coming out from C9. They look super, super strong. Yeah, I mean, it is going to be up to uh, up to Kung Kungara to decide what map we're going to. I don't know what's in the pool, but you'd think that they might want to try to cheese them out. I don't think you want to play Cloud9 standard. Probably not, but I... I Historically, uh, if we look at what happened in the EU cut or the EU qualifiers back on Monday, I'd almost expect the Paul pick to come out here, maybe just hoping yeah. that it, it would definitely favor a team that's newer to the game, which clearly Kung is newer to the game. You don't need as much in regards of big setup strategies, uh, different looks in King of the Hill that you have in Payload. Right. Payload, or sorry, uh, for, because Payload, Payload does require a lot of preparation. King of the Hill, it's much more based on what your raw mechanical skill is. So, and they're as, they're asking now if we can play Anubis. Anubis is not in the pool, no, so no, we will not be going to Anubis. Hanamura. But will they choose Hanamura? Yeah. That would be interesting. Well, here's the thing. You don't go to Gibraltar. Even if you're envious, you probably don't take C9 to Gibraltar. It's, it's one of their best maps by far. <laughs> uh, Hanamura could be up there. Nepal could be in there. They are going to go to Nepal. That makes sense. Chat asking the real questions, by the way, after seeing the end of that map going, where is the spice now? <laughs> All right. So Nepal will be the next map. We'll see uh, how this goes. Both teams getting into it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fine, but now in the rule set that we have, you're you're begging to play into <laughs> double Winston. And even, uh, I mean, no one runs double Winston better than Cloud9. And you can scoff at that all you want and say Winston's this, Winston's that. No one has ever run double Winston better than Cloud9. They have such a coordination no. on it, um, on payload, on King of the Hill, at, at, no matter what. So you're looking to run into it against a team that is practiced on this two hero set. So... I don't know. I mean, pick your poison. Cloud Nine's a great team, so you're you're gonna have to deal with them in somewhere or another. But Cloud Nine is busting out the good old tried and true King of the Hill composition: Twinston, Tucio, and Trey Trey. It is Jet Set King Kong Future coming out here from the side of C9. Kai Kai hasn't picked yet, but it's a safe bet to say that he's going to go on Winston. This is a setup we've seen time and time again on these King of the Hill maps. It is standard. Uh, especially for a team like C9, where C9 arguably ran this comp better than anyone else. And it's a pretty darn good comp, so that is not uh, low praise in the least. All right, so I Although, mean... Although, interesting, they're switching up. Yeah. So I they're guess. instead going to go with Kai Kai and the Zarya, Sure 4 on Farah, Debit on the Roadhog, Adam on Mercy, Reaver on 76. So not even stacking anything. C9 going back to a more <laughs> traditional comp as we've seen as of late. Yeah, interesting. We won hero limit now. It's a super surprise, especially given their history on Winston, but hey, we'll see it works out. Both teams getting into it. Reaver right now looking for long range poke. Debit able to take out Michael right away. Reaver getting into it, just knocks Peacock right up into the air. Meanwhile, look at how deep Debit's going. He finds another hook. Debit on a triple kill. C9 working Kung right now from the left, from the right. Everyone getting kills, and this is. If there's a scoreboard right now, I think it's every kill right now in favor of C9. Yeah, it's 6 0. So they're going to hold very far forward here. They're already through the doorway. I'm going to back off a little bit as Winston jumps in. My ultimate is like the part where the chair is just like, the spice is gone. The spice definitely has been, we've gone from hot and spicy to barely mild right now as Kong right now looking to reset. Winston leading the way with the Zarya shield. Everyone going up this left side from their perspective. Here comes Sure4 in the back. Here comes the barrage. Justice reigns from above. Grabs the double kill as Grego boops Motorious right off the edge. See ya, Reaper. Yikes. Yep. Yet to suffer a loss is Cloud9. And the first person to blink onto uh, a second tracer is going to be Kungara. 
So they do add a second tracer in that soup and Michael now. They might be starting to transition to a 2-2-2 a two, two, two roster. Doesn't like it's on the menu, and oh, the long range hook on Motorious getting it saved by Azaria. And here comes a whole hog trying to just save himself as the team looks to dive on him. He's gonna get blown up by that pulse bomb. First kill will go here to the side of Kung, and they're moving in. Motorious looking for the midair rockets. Not able to get just yet, but oh, one big midair rocket needs one more. Putting the pressure here on to Sherford. He's gonna take him out. They might get this up because the, the, the technical visor is gonna come out momentarily for PCAC, and it's such a good ult on this map. Attack fire visor is on the way out. Kai Kai though is fully charged up 100% maximum charge has Graviton ready. He's begun the last two kills here for C9 and now we'll see if he uses Graviton to clear at this point which Kung was able to retake here in just a moment. Uses the Graviton only gets Lucio but Lucio finds his face incredibly melted as Kai Kai goes off for a double kill. C9 taking this right back. And Hex there's nothing spicier than a Zarya beam in your face. No I, I don't imagine so. Except maybe, uh, maybe Sombrero Reaper. All right, so C9 right now, 89% here on the point. This is going the last gas push coming out from the side of Kung. They are moving in. They go for the pulse bomb, not able to get there. And now on double tracer as well, but here comes Sherfor over the top. Justice reigning, takes out one, looks to get Mo, will get him with the follow-up rocket. A triple kill for Sherfor, just cleaning house here on Farah. Really good stuff coming out from Sherfor. Yeah, it's just soup on the point. Soup goes down. Should be it for stage one of Nepal. I'm actually a little surprised they were able to take the point once there. So, small victories, I suppose, for, for Kungala. Well, C9 definitely coming in for us for round number one. We'll see if they switch things up for round number two. This is maybe this is where they'll go the double Winston, double Tracer set, but maybe not for now. Oh. They seem perfectly okay keeping it very. Yeah, I think they're proving a point. Would be my guess if we had to ask them later, but uh, maybe not as they're they're switching up now. So who knows? All right, so 10 seconds remaining. C9 again, they're looking to prove a point here, but uh, we'll be sure for and debit here on Tracer. So. Oh wait, it's not just two tracers, Hex, it's four tracers <laughs> on the way out. Oh, Cheers, love the cavalry is here. It's a different kind four of Four tracer offense coming. Yeah. Five tracers, one Lucio. Yeah. Oh no, Hex, not like this. Oh, poor Adam, they think he's the worst tracer. He's not the worst tracer, he's the best Lucio. <laughs> yep, they got a spin it positive. The glass is half full, Hex. So, still proving a point, uh, just kind of the opposite side of the spectrum now, and uh, yeah, the cavalry is definitely here. Wow, Motorius takes down Reaper. They're moving right down those PCAC, not going to be one for this world. The Tracers of C9 definitely getting more work in. Grego moving right in. Zarya now not long has her shield, but this is three Tracers on her. That's so much damage. You know, like, C9 now just mopping up the remnants. Ninko types in chat, now that's some BM, and it's really not, though. This is like, it's, I don't think it's BM, it's just like, it's normal strat right now. This is Yeah, this is a winning strategy we've seen over the last week or so. Five Tracers are actually really good on King of the Hill. Sherford lands a stick, unfortunately goes right onto the Zarya shield, so all he did was power up Zarya a little bit, but C9 with this Tracer power is just mowing down the side of Kung right now. They have no response to this whatsoever. Maybe they'll go all Tracers themselves and we'll have ourselves a 10 Tracer game. We'll have to see. Well, they do add in a McCree, which on paper is a pretty good response to Tracers. Not to five of them, though, is one of the issues of dealing with five Tracers. They had a couple of their own, though. Adam does have a uh, beat ready to drop here, sound barrier at the ready. He's gonna drop this and C9's gonna go right into it. Oh really, for now, they're just holding on. Sherfor got into back, took out Soup. McCree not gonna have a lot of success there. Three kills now for C9, just swarming like angry bees over this Kung roster. Oh my goodness. Yeah, even the sound of the, all these pulse pistols is just, it does sound like an infestation. We are full UK right now, because Tracer is from the UK. Yeah, okay, we've definitely, definitely gone full UK. It's five UK, one Brazil. We go from where the character's origins are, as Surefour goes in, takes out Peacock, has a pulse bomb at the ready, and Surefour has just been beasting it here in the back line. I mean, all these Tracers we've seen have been doing well, but Surefour landing most of what he needs to get, as this has just been absolutely brutal for the side of Kung right now. Drop the beat. They're dropping the beat, they're moving in. Here comes the Graviton Surge. We'll get the Lucio in it. Oh, Adam, are you going Adam. to live? The pulse bomb though from Devitt comes in, takes out two. 
sort of saving people caught in that graviton as C9 still hanging in here despite the ult being used by Kung. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's they're they're just everywhere. They're just everywhere. They're everywhere and nowhere. It is Schrodinger's tracer right now. This is what happens when your chrono accelerator malfunctions, Hex. You get this many tracers. There is an error in the time stream. Well, one of the things about, like, yeah, just actually dealing with two tracers, which makes it so difficult, is especially if they have the same skin, which is a strategy, actually, uh, you can't really count their blinks and their rewinds. Did that tracer rewind? Did the other rewind? Is she out of blinks? Can, where, where can I expect them to be? Oh, no, no, it's it's completely incomprehensible. You yeah. cannot... It, versus one tracer, you know sort of what she could do, but all those tracers, right. it's just blinks everywhere, rewinds everywhere. So, oh no, that C9 now, this this does feel like a little bit BM. They're coming out with five Roadhogs. They're going to be masters of the road. A little uh, Brazilian barbecue coming out. Oh my goodness. Now we got to re 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 has to break it up. He's gonna this is that. five Australia, one Brazil. Well, now Reaver is Winston, so we're adding adding a space base in here, too. There's going to be a lot of hooks here in this game. All of the Roadhogs on the way out. Hooks going to be a thing here. And that's a lot of meat to actually carve through. Yeah, they're going to have to add in a couple more Reavers. Uh, they've got two. They, they could use about four. Oh, there's so many hooks! As Kai Kai proceeds to teabag. It's frustrating in a pub game to play against two uh, Roadhogs, because if you dodge one hook, you're feeling great, then all of a sudden you get yanked the other way. They are going to do a smart thing and add in another Reaper, though. I mean, they yeah, are I mean, three Reapers, why this. not? I'm not yeah. sure if that, I mean, it kind of helps, but if a Reaper gets hooked, that Reaper is going to go down. Oh, the Roadhogs have a lot of power here in the setup. Even though you'd think Reaper would be a counter, it doesn't always work out that way because of how strong Roadhog's left click is. Everyone right now looking for hooks. We'll see who will have the next big hook here as Denver right now going to step back. He's going to back up. Soundbear comes out here for the C9 side. Everyone getting in on that. As right now, Kuhn having all sorts of trouble. But here comes the tire. Will run over Sure 4. Let's take out one of the better players on the C9 side. But this is rough as oh no. The whole hog pushing Peacock right back. We're all hogs now, Hex. <laughs> I mean, are you not entertained? I'm entertained. Well, I mean, right now I'm just thinking about the fact that, ironically, I do have slow cooker pork uh, going down downstairs right now, and all these roadhogs definitely reminding me of it. I, I, we, we're not going to entirely devolve into pig jokes here, but oh my goodness. I will say, though, that the mass roadhog stack does seem to be having some trouble. We do see that uh, Kung is able to turn this more in their favor. They got some of the picks they needed. And I don't know if C9 is going to stick with all this right now, given what just happened. Yeah, I mean, you don't really want to give up a stage if you don't have to here. Um, tire is coming out. He does take down Drago, so... Yeah, yeah we still into it in the back, but he's going to get taken out. The Reaper's now finally getting a bit of value, and they're going to have two Death Blossoms up for the next fight. Let's and uh-oh, here we go. We're, ba we're back to the cavalry. Yeah. Transition into uh, five tracers <laughs> again. Except Adam. Adam's, uh, Adam's just a Lucio. Adam is always on Lucio. He's the one rock of consistency right now in this match. Die, die, you see a death boss going in the back. Michael able to pick up the double kill, including taking out Adam. And now with no Lucio up, this is actually pretty rough for the Tracers. They're not going to have the healing they need. This is why usually you see teams run two Lucios if they're going to run stacking like this, just because with no Adam up, how are you going to top up all the glancing damage to these Tracers? Yeah. Very difficult. So we'll see if they're able to convince Grego to actually go on to the second Lucio, if they so need it. They're, they're actually having a little bit of trouble now. They, they die. They There's a couple deaths there. Super's going to have a big death boss here in just a moment. He's going to have There it goes. But no, Grego able to just headshot him down towards the end. And C9 with these tracers are starting to chip away at this defense coming up from Kung. They're taking things into their own hands. They're moving forward. Devin and Kai Kai getting the picks they need. And the tracer wave washing over the side of Kung. And C9's going to retake this point, Hex. Yeah, they definitely have it back, and now it's going to be a lot of pulse bombs coming out as it's going to be about four of them up. Here comes one, completely misses. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, Kai Kai getting even deeper into it. Uh, Grego looking for some pickoffs, and these traces have a lot of pulse bombs here. Three pulse bombs ready to be thrown out from the side of C9. They're keeping momentum in their favor. They are now tied things up 80% to 80%. And for Kung, they're going to need to make something happen sooner rather than later. They're going to go with Sound Bear from Nunko, the and then hope for the best. Here comes the Sound Bear. They're moving in. Let's see if Soup can kill some of these tracers. A lot will depend on his Reaper play here. He's about to have a death boss, but Hex, he has no life. Yeah, well, Matortis took down Adam. I mean, it's a huge kill, as you mentioned earlier, taking down the Lucio, but it does not seem to matter as they're able to clean up everyone else. Only one alive. He's going to have to wraith under the Soup point. Soup is going on. He's going to hit Q, but he's going to immediately die here. Yeah. Death does not come for the Tracers as C9 going to take this round. Wins everything here, 3-0 to zero <laughs> on Nepal, and that means that they have eliminated Kung from this tournament as a single win. Yeah, out in the qualifying rounds. And uh, I think for Cloud9, it's not so much about winning, it's about sending a message. I think uh, I think a message is clear. Oh, Tori is saying, see you in two months. <laughs> <laughs> Big plays though coming out from C9, definitely just washing over. And the multi-tracer strategy working out as two tracers pick up cards in the end. Sure for though, 80% kill participation. Although I think that's a little bit bugged right now. Um, it is bug because we've seen 104, although we, both you and I wouldn't put it past Valtaja it was the time we saw him get 100%. 80% might be accurate, though. A uh, Shore 4 is probably the best DPS player on this team, so it's not stunning that he would be in on most of those kills. So on the bright side, we are going to go right into Say No More Fam, SNMF, because <laughs> that's too long of a team name to actually fit on any sort of overlay. Just call him Fam. That is a good idea. We're going to call him fan. But say no more. So it was very good play coming out from the side of C9. They are able to get past their rivals despite all the spice going into it. Well played by them. And we're going to go right into the round of 32. C9 versus fan. Yeah, let's take a look at the 